I'm here with Coach Larry Wade. How you feeling today? I feel great. How are you? I'm absolutely great. So uh, I know your name is skyrocketing, <laughs> just like out of control. Uh, what would you say has to do with that? You know what? You know, first of all, and I've said this on every video that you'll ever hear me say, I'm honored that, you know, these guys think enough of me to allow me to work with them. But I would honestly say because of the combination of their talent and their spirit as people and their spirit as boxers and my ability to train them, their performance is what I would say would mainly be the reason that it's kind of gone up in the last few years. But, you know, I'm just honored to be part of the team. Surprise, mother... You know, I know you said that your network of people is like family. Are there people that you turn down or you just kind of, whoever comes to you, <laughs> there's like the best route, you know? Yes. You know what? Unfortunately, you know, I have had to turn people down. It's, but, of course, it's never personal. It's usually based on time, meaning having a lack there of time. You know, because I like to commit 100% to what I do and whomever, whomever I'm working with. It's not something that I take lightly. So I need to be able to commit the right amount of time and the right amount of energy. And, and therefore, you can't always take every boxer that's you know offered to you i'm very selective based on their personalities and their ability to be successful and through that i've had some success in the last few years absolutely indeed granted um i know that you didn't start with boxing so <laughs> how did you transition i know i know you personally from unlv right right, right so right. what was actually the steps to get to where you're at now well it's funny you know like most strength conditioning coaches i started out with the sport that i was the closest to which was track and field and i ended up getting a, a world record with a guy named dominic arnold in the 110 hurdles and end up getting the world championship medal with and also who who went on to become an olympic champion carmelita jetter who is the fastest woman alive how you doing jet and that being said, that's kind of how it got started, you know, transferred to NFL with some guys like Brandon Mayan Malaluna from the San Diego Chargers. Next thing you know, I'm doing NBA. And from there, I ended up in the boxing and boxing fit me well based on my personality. Uh, I consider myself to be uh, advanced from an intellectual standpoint and all from a knowledge standpoint, but also from have the right temperament, meaning aggression or whatever necessary to deal with, you know, boxers. You know, they're definitely very talented individuals, but they also come with a certain temperament that you have to deal with as well. So I think I fit into that from a personality standpoint. Okay, so just from being around the gym, I have noticed that people do not really, I'm not going to say they do not favor female boxers, but if you ever seen one that fit the standard that you, you know, want to train, would you train a female boxer? No question I would train a female boxer. I don't, I don't care what gender you are. You know, what I care about, honestly, at the end of the day, is what's your desire? Do you want to be successful? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to sacrifice for it? Are you willing to work for it? Are you willing to be uncomfortable for it? If you're willing to do all these things, no matter what the sport is, I don't care about what gender. Mm -hmm. All I care about is your desire and what you're willing to give up to get it right because that's all that matters are you because the people who aren't willing to sacrifice typically aren't the people who are willing to do whatever it takes to win okay so if you want to tra train with you there's hope for everybody oh anybody, <laughs> everybody for sure Bobby absolutely coach. Totally, you totally. Come on now. I got, I got a special regiment just for you. I think that you gassing him a little bit, but it's okay. We love you, Jody. Yeah. Anywho, um, so you know, it's a lot of money talks all the time, right? But right, right. do you think it's feasible to sometimes do things for free? Well, listen, let's be very honest, and I want everyone who's a young strength and conditioning coach to hear this. When I started this job, I did it for free. Okay, I was able to work with a guy who was an upcoming guy who ended up being a world champion, multiple world champions, and Sean Porter. Uh, dad came and asked me to help, and I was like, I was grateful that he thought enough of me to bring me in. And at first, you know, I was helping him with the strength conditioning side, but I went to the gym every day for free for over a year and a half, just so I could learn more about the sport in which I'm trying to be the best at. So that, in a sense, is a form of internship where I'm learning on the job and not getting paid to do. It wasn't getting paid for those sessions, but the knowledge that I was receiving was more valuable than anything anyone could pay me. So understand this, you young guys, all young ladies, if you want to be a strength conditioning coach at the elite professional level, please understand that you're going to have to sacrifice something at some time, which is probably going to be your time and your energy. Don't be afraid to give up that in order to get the long-term results. So the answer is yes, I had to give up time. I will do things for free, and I do think that as long as I keep that mentality, I'll always be relevant and valuable because my motive is never money. So what happens when you make enough money? Then you lose your drive, right? My motive has always been success. 
to be the best at what we can do. And there's never enough success. There's always more you can do. There's always more champions you can build. So, no, I, I definitely think that you have to be willing to do it and do it from your heart and let money not be the motive, but allow your skill to be the reason why they want to pay you. I heard that success is rented and rent is due every day, so you got to keep Amen. showing up. Amen. Okay, Amen. absolutely, 100%. So what do you see yourself in the next five to ten? Okay, so as you guys have, have said earlier, things are elevating in a, in a number of ways. There's some things that we're going to be releasing more from an education standpoint. I've come to find out that knowledge is, is always the key. And I want to be able to share my knowledge with everyone out there. So I'm in the process now creating some things just so I can share that knowledge with everyone. Not just myself, so everyone can be helped. Uh, in the sport, you see a lot of people now uh, dying, unfortunately. And because of that, some of that can be based on the preparation, getting to that point where maybe there's not enough fluid on the brain and you get hit, or whatever the case may be, and you may not live to see the next day. I take that very personal because that's my job to make sure my athletes leave that ring and go back to their family. So part of that is me trying to offer education to all the young strength conditioning coaches and current ones and tell them, hey, this is how I've been able to build champions. So that's what I'm really looking to do. Hey, it's my last question for you. I know discipline is major in this sport. So when you have the athletes coming to you, obviously there's training, but then there's nutrition. What do you think is hardest for them? Is the training or the nutrition, like turning away the burgers and all that? You feel me? I think it's different for everyone. I think every boxer has their struggle. <laughs> some is the training, some is the food, some is the regiment of what the training and the food, how it goes together. It's different for everyone. But I'm a firm believer, and I want you to know this, young lady, in case you ever run into this crossroad, your stimulus of your success has to be bigger than the, the temporary happiness of that food yeah. or the temporary happiness of not going to train at that moment. When you become a world champion at this level, you're automatically in the books forever. You're always a world champion, and that has to mean more to you than eating that burger at that moment or that one extra workout that you put in. It's all worth it at the end. I agree with that. That's why I'm not going to train you, and then you're going to say you disagree with the man. Right, <laughs> right, right. So that was what I would say to that. Okay. Well, 100%, I appreciate your time. Thank you for you your know, time. You said that you want to be the best ever, but I'm feeling like you might already be, and you, you know. Well, you know what I always say to, to anyone who asks me, it's not my place to say that I'm the best. I'm going to leave that to you guys. You know, but 12 weeks with Luis Ortiz. I didn't have him for 12. I had him for eight weeks. I had him for eight. He started training prior to coming to me. He was already in the process of getting in shape, coming to me. When I got him for the eight weeks, they gave me that period of time. And I'm grateful because, once again, it's my, I'm new to a camp. And when it was over, you know, RT said to me that, Coach, I felt good. I was ready. I just got caught. And I can appreciate that. He valued what I did, and we're already working on the next camp. Absolutely, 100%. Well, you're great. I appreciate your time. Thank you for your time. No problem at all. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs>